Adrian Yanez. Como esta, senor? Oh. <laughs> Como esta, senor? <laughs> How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Excited to be here. A few days until your fight. How has the body? How's your mind? Uh, everything, everything's great, man. Body and mind is great. The only thing that sucks is the weight cutting. So, you know, I, uh, everybody's going to try to skate around and be like, oh, no, I feel fucking great. No, you're eating less food. You know, you had to sweat some shit out, you know. So for me, like, I'm going to be honest about that. But overall, other than that, man, I feel great. And it also helps that I had a coffee with an extra espresso shot in there. So I, I'm a little bit up there. <laughs> Obviously, you're coming off your first UFC loss. Um, what went wrong? Man, I, I got away from myself. I got away from myself. I didn't. I wasn't doing the right things. You know, as soon as I, I was doing the right things in that first minute. But again, it's only one minute of the fight. One minute of the fight, and as soon as I had him rocked, I instantly tried to go for the kill. And again, I, it's, it was that weird thing because leading up to the fight, I was like, I know who I have in front of me. Like this guy's a fucking cockroach. He's he doesn't die. He just won't fucking die. You know. And I said that with the most respect. You know. Again, no disrespect to Rob at all. You know. That's that's a that's a compliment. You know. Because not a lot of guys can do that. Uh, but yeah, I forgot who I had in front of me. I hit him with a hard shot. And I was like, I'm going for the kill. And he was able to turn the tide, turn the shift, and start working his way back into the fight. And by that time that he hit me with a good jab, that at the time, in that moment, I didn't know I was hurt until I looked at the fight back. I was like, oh, I was hurt. I was like, oh, shit. In that moment, I was like, oh, this fucker just hit me. Let me try to go. I'm going to try to hit him back. And then got way too sloppy, way too started throwing. I threw, like, my the finishing sequence. I threw an overhand, and I threw a left hook. But if you look at the if you look at the actual fight itself, where I'm throwing it, left hands down when I throw the overhand, right hands down when I throw the left hook, and I did it with poor technique. My left hook was so low that it exposed my chin, and that's the that's the shot that that got me. That's the that's the one that put me on my ass. So you got to go back. Had to work on the basics. Had to work on my mind, on the mental part as well too, because I got to stay within my game plan. If it's working, keep keep letting it work. You know. So from that fight until right now, I guess what was the biggest thing learned in this camp or biggest thing like learned from, like learned just? Oh, overall learned is honestly just being able to mentally stay within a game plan or mentally just like don't throw everything out the window, you know? <laughs> um, why haven't you returned since, since uh, UFC 287? Man, I've been wanting to come back as soon as the doctors cleared me. I wanted to get back in there as soon as possible. You know, like I woke up, I was very coherent during that. You know, I was pissed off at myself, of course, but uh, they gave me a suspension. Like, and I, it was like legitimate. Probably, my coach gave me an extra extra couple weeks though. Like, uh, there I got cleared within the same month, but then my coach Eves was like, "Nah, give yourself two extra weeks." I was like. Fuck, <laughs> but uh, after once once uh he, once it went past the date, he was just like, all right, let's go. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Started working. Been in a camp since May because I wanted to get back in there like immediately. I was looking for an August September fight, you know, like, and then it was teased towards me September sixteenth. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, put me on that card. That that works perfectly for me. That that works perfectly. Of course, I would want to fight a lot more sooner, but at the same time, I'm here for it. Like, uh, But the fact that it's October 14th, you know, I'm fighting now, you know, it's, you know, again, it, it's also kind of a blessing because I got more time to work, you know, so. Were you bummed that you weren't on that Noche UFC card? Yeah, I kind of was. Just the energy of that card just felt like a pay-per-view card, and I I really wanted to show up and show out, but... Uh, you know, I get we get to have a banger of a fight here at the Apex, you know. <laughs> and you're, un you're you're undefeated at the Apex, right? So you're, <laughs> I mean, there oh, was a. <laughs> it's nothing but good vibes here, man. Nothing but great vibes here. I love this, man. Coming back here, I get to see all y'all again, then get to see Kristoff over here, you know, at, at his home, you know. So for me, it's all good. I mean, there was a little little uh, section of time where we were going to name you Apex Adrian, right? Oh yeah, well I'm back here. I'm back here to take the throne. <laughs> <laughs> um. Obviously, you know, you're not getting a uh, another tune-up fight. You're getting a tough Jonathan Martinez. Um, obviously, on paper, it's just – it's probably the people's main event, right? Like, it's just – it's it's a ridiculous fight. How do you see this fight kind of playing out? Man, it's – to me, it's going to be fun for the fans. It's going to be really, really fun for the fans because we're both strikers. We both want to try and knock each other out. Uh, the way I see the fight playing out, obviously, is me getting my hand raised. So, yeah. Um, it's going to be fun, though. It's going to be a really, really fun. How do you prepare for someone like like Jonathan, where he's just, you know, obviously 
a good striker, but he's well-rounded everywhere, and you got to train for those calf kicks, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. He does a really good job of being able to uh, being able to land those calf kicks. He, he He's just a hard kicker in general. His body kicks hurt. His head kicks hurt. His, his, like, just all, all in general. So it's not just the calf kicks you got to worry about. So to me, you know, just got to make sure, you know, i got a Muay Thai coach in my corner right now. So, uh, you know, I feel like I'm taking all the right, uh, right measures, you know? And finally for me, what were your thoughts on Sean O'Malley winning the uh, championship? That was very crazy. And in that in that moment, I remember seeing it. I was like, I was in that moment, whenever I saw saw what was going on in that second round, I was like, like I was like, oh shit, like it might happen, like holy, like holy shit. And uh, you know, seeing it's it's a weird thing because now like the vision's kind of honestly kind of opened up. It gives uh, Marab a, sh a chance to fight for the title. Because uh, I know with him and Al, if Aljo would have stayed stayed champ, I well, he probably might have given him the title shot anyways. Because I know Aljo was thinking about going up after the fight, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It kind of opened up the division for new matchups. You know, there's a lot of crazy crazy things going on. You know, you you got guys who are probably not in the top five that are not going to get the the title shot next. So uh, yeah, so for me, it, it it does open up the division. And honestly, with how much how much going on there's some weird things that happen where like to fight to win two you know and i'm there you know so it's bright it's bright in front of me so um yeah it just opens up everything <laughs> good luck man no, thank you Adrian, uh staying on that same road if the ufc goes ahead and opts with uh giving cheeto a rematch with o'malley which may be the case how would you see that one going that's uh that's a tough one that's a tough one because cheeto is like a notoriously so slow starter uh and o'malley can can get going pretty quickly if he wants to uh that would be a tough one like it i feel like if he were to take that same approach that Corey did i feel like it would be it's a, it's it's a it's definitely a winnable fight for the both of them but i'm edging o'malley in that fight just because of everything that was going on before the uh Cheeto hit him with a calf kick, and then next you know he's on on the ground and gets uh, TKO'd. But uh, yeah, I I I feel like both of them have grown and learned so much from that fight. And I think it wouldn't be the same fight at all. I think it'd be it would be a fun fight, fun fight for the fans for sure. And you mentioned that you had to work on your mental aspect. How was that process like going into this one? Yeah, it took it took a lot. I had to like really actually sit down and actually had like more like mental dialogue with myself and just being like all right like while i'm sparring <laughs> you know while i'm sparring you know just because someone lands lands a good kick or lands a good shot on me i like hey like gotta stay within gotta stay composed you know i can't i can't immediately try to go uh, as a lot of these people would try to say like get get back you know like in a fight someone lands a, like a hard kick the guy tries to throw one right back you know so trying to get away from like doing that you know trying to stay nice and composed and while i'm sparring too because uh, we had we had different guys coming in uh, on days on on like on a, on a sparring day, so don't have the exact same look that you're usually used to getting. So whenever you get the guy coming in, you don't know what he's gonna do. So you had to stay composed during that, and that those rounds helped me out a lot too. Just like just to stay within myself, you know. And uh, like obviously this was a longer camp for you. What were like the biggest differences you've noticed going like in with this longer camp? Man, honestly, just being able to go back and work on the basics and work on like, like just again, just the basics, man. Like, I, I was, we're over here trying to do like so much different things and like trying to do so much that I kind of got away and it's like, oh, I'm not working on what I like. I like again, I might be working on like this. I'm gonna throw some bullshit out there. I was like. Let's just say I'm like working on a spinning kick. That's all right. That's a cool kick. It's a super fucking cool kick. But at the same time, I was like, while I'm working on that, my right my right hand is like my right punch is getting shittier. You know, I was like, I'm dropping my left hook. You know, whatever I thought. So I had to make sure I really went down to the basics on this. Fair enough. And a couple last ones for me. It looks like the UFC is returning to Texas in December. It may or may not happen. But uh, I know it's only two months away. But if everything goes your way and you might may maybe like a receive a call or something, is that something you'd like to do? Hop in one of those fights? Yeah, make it make sense for me, man. That's that's all I'm gonna ask. Make it make sense for me, because uh, especially I kind of been super selfish these past couple months with my time and just like because uh, I'm also I also coach a lot of guys uh, back in Houston as well too. So. 
uh, I got to make sure they're they're good as well too. So for me, it has to make sense. If I don't, if I come out with injuries, you know, then like, hey, that's not that's not happening. But if I come out Scott clean, hey guys, you know, make it make sense. You know, they throw we, we you know we can bump a, we can bump up pay a little bit. You know, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, I'm up. I would be up for it. I just know it'd be difficult because, again, I kind of put a lot of the guys on the back burner leading up to this fight, and I kind of want to make them a little bit more of a priority as well too. Because, you know, I got to make sure like we we get wins. You know. Fair enough. And uh, last one for me. Obviously, you saw Dana is adamant towards Mexican Independence Day. He says he wants to do this every year as long as he's here. What are your thoughts on hearing that, and uh, like how excited he is to host Mexican Independence Day events every year? Man, that's fucking awesome, man. That's fucking amazing. Just because, like, uh, kind of going back to my childhood, you know, watching all the Oscar De La Hoya fights, the Mayweather fights on Mexican holidays, you know, to me was is just amazing. You know, like, that's where most of my memorable, memorable stuff, like, comes from, like, with my dad, you know, from watching the boxing fights those days, man. Like, it, like, man, being able to fight on the day that I know that if I was just anybody else and if it was, like, I... It, I know that day would have been like me and my dad watching fights, you know. So to me, the fact that it's in uh, the sport that I love doing, MMA instead of boxing, you know, me doing that, like, dude, that's so fucking cool. Like, I, I fucking love it. Just because it has nostalgia feeling for me in the sense that I used to do this with my dad watching boxing, you know. So for me, I'm, I'm fucking all for it. Thank you. Adrian right here. Um, season seven of Contender Series finished last night. As an alum, what are your thoughts on how it's not only helped fighters get into the UFC, but also your journey? Uh, helping fighters get into the UFC with the Contender Series? Yeah. Okay. Man, it's a, it's a absolutely phenomenal platform to be on. Like, it gives you a boost. You know, like, every time you step in and you see the war room with, uh, with uh, Dana White and you see all those see all those blue ch like those blue squares like that means something you you came from you came from the contender series you know you got the red i believe that's tough and then you got the blue it's just contender series like it helps boost you up like you they're giving you a platform so you can excel and jump up into a higher position you know and it's it's great man like i'm telling you like a lot of these guys a lot of these guys now they're especially starting to come in are are really solid they're they're ufc ready so they're they're not really signing guys they're not really signing guys just like like that anymore. It may be a week's notice, maybe, but even if they sign a guy that has a like and they've been scheduled to fight on contender series, most of those guys get called up to the UFC anyways, because that's how good they are. So overall, man, for the guys coming in, like y'all have to, tr they have to treat this like it, like it's a UFC level fight. I know some guys have walked in and you're like, oh nah, this is this is just another fight. I'm in the apex, like guys, y'all don't understand. I was like fighting in the apex, like y'all 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 fight. Like y'all in the regional scene, if you're a big ticket seller, you don't have all those tickets there at the. At, you don't have all those tickets that you sold there at the Apex. Like you don't have that support. Like you're coming into a spot where you're just the center of the center of the attention. Of course, you're the center of the attention over there at at the regional side, but like you don't have nobody chanting your name unless you got people that live here in Vegas and all that stuff. But like you don't have the luxury of like having a whole crowd saying your name or cheering for you or booing you and all that stuff. Like it's literally you, you can hear their coaches. They can hear, you can hear their coaches and all that stuff. Like, man, it's, it's, it's a definitely weird feeling. Well, especially for me, like when I came from COVID time, so I literally had nobody in the stands. So at least here you get a little bit of stands, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a phenomenal platform. It's a phenomenal platform for, for people to use that to bump and excel. Like look, look at someone like uh Raul Rosas, you know, Raul Rosas, like just with the story alone is good, but he jumped to the contender series, fought a, a really good guy in uh, Mondo Gutierrez. You know that's a UFC level type of fight. And then next thing you know, he grunts into the UFC, gets a gets a good solid win, and then just skyrockets him into into like into another stratosphere when it comes to the following and all that stuff. So it's there's a lot of good things that can happen here. I know you have those videos of what you're watching UFC fights and everything like that. For you, um, over the course of this last season, I don't know how much you did watch. What, who impressed you most? Man, I didn't get to watch this much, this much uh, contender series because I was like, most of the times that I was, like it was on, I was training, so I was like, I didn't really get to watch too many. Uh, but man, I can't, I can't remember which one, which one it was. But like, I think last night, the the like the guys with the both knees, man, that 
that that to me was just pretty cool. But uh, the season before, the guy who the guy who impressed me a lot was was it Joe Pfeiffer on that last season? Yeah, Joe Pfeiffer. Joe Pfeiffer. Like yeah, last season was Joe Joe Pfeiffer. Um, and then kind of segue into something a little bit more fun. One of the fighters is, was from Texas, and so I kind of asked them the same thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on Waterberg? Because I know you rep Texas. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I, I wish I could have more Waterberg, man. Uh, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Uh, if yeah, it's fucking good. <laughs> it's it's good. Uh, my favorite thing is the buffalo chicken sandwich there. It's not just the burger. It's the buffalo chicken sandwich, you know. So you get the ranch. You get the buffalo sauce on top of it, man. And then also, too, a little life hack, you know, what y'all can do is y'all can switch the buffalo and the ranch for honey butter. Like y'all, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, y'all go guys, try that out, guys. I didn't know this, and then my friend told me about it, and I was like, all right, tried it. You know, one of those nights I came back a little bit too, you know, <laughs> a little bit having too much fun. Got one of those, man. You, little biscuits, those little biscuits, the honey butter chicken uh, biscuits, they're good. But try it on that uh, chicken strip sandwich, man. I'm telling you guys. Definitely gonna have to try that. Sometime. <laughs> and then last one for me. I know you're you're very big into shoes. Is there anything? Obviously, you got the low tops on right now. Is there anything that you're looking to buy soon or anything like that? Uh, not right now. I gotta go to Space City. I gotta go to Space City and go pick the shoes I want. But honestly, you know what? They're not. I, they're 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 good for me. I love them because I I don't like the most. I'm I'm pretty basic. These these are actually me reaching out like in like uh, how can I say it? Being a little bit. What's the best way to put it? What's the best. Yeah, I, I'm very limited. I'm very basic. Like it's if it's not black or white or gray, I don't want it. But I'm a, I, I kind of either want the uh, Lebrons, the Fruity Pebble ones, or the Polaroids. All right. Cool. Thank you, and uh, good luck Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Hey, just, just one last one. Uh, I saw you mentioned Mondo Gutierrez. He's fighting your friend Cameron Smotherman yeah. next month. What can the fans expect out of that? Oh, man. No, shh. No, I'm telling you right now, that's going to be a fun fight. Like, I, I, have, I have the utmost confidence in Cameron. Uh, you know, again, that fight right there is a UFC level type of fight, you know. Uh, they both had unfor unfortunate, you know, fights, but, like, Again, I believe even with their their both their last fights, like I think they're both good enough to be in the UFC. They're both there. They're both UFC level ready, man. The, both those guys are fucking tough. And Cameron's striking so phenomenal. Again, like that, I I don't know how the fuck that guy did it within such short amount of time. Like the guy was started training with me, like about in 2018. So within five years, within five years. He's gotten so good at his UFC level, you know, and that to me is fucking nuts, you know. But again, that's gonna be a fun fight, and of course, you know, Mondo is a, is a really good fighter, and I, you know, I hopefully after this win he goes on you know, after this loss that he takes, you know, he he builds a win streak, you know. But again, my training partner, my guy, what like a good friend of mine, Cameron, like I I just think he's gonna, I think he's gonna dominate, but at the same time. You know, I hope Mondo after that fight goes on a win streak, you know, and gets into the UFC because he's good enough to do it. He's fucking there. Uh, he was already he was so close and shit. Uh, for me, Cameron's right there too. I f I feel like he's there. He's been UFC level ready uh, for a while, but you know that fight's gonna really solidify for him. Just a couple quick ones. Okay. Going back, I love to talk about going back to the basics and the mindset and stuff. And I know the confidence you have to have to get in the cage has to be so incredibly high and always feel that your skill set's better. So when you go back to the Rob Font fight, do you feel that he was better that day or is it a mistake that you think that you made with yourself with maybe not staying composed when, when you took that strong shot that you said? Oh, no, don't don't let it get misconstrued. He he was doing a lot of slick things in there. He had a great game plan as well, too. Like he used to throw, like I was slip, he caught, he capitalized on something that I was that I was doing, which not a lot of people will. Uh, like slipping on the inside, throwing combinations, throwing combinations. You know, uh, for me, I love doing that. He started collar tying me. I would slip the jab. He was in. He already knew that he wasn't gonna land every single jab. What he did know was that if he was in range where I slipped the jab. He can cuff the back of my head and get a single car as high. And once he knew where, where my head's at, he knows where he can throw. Like, it, just small little stuff like that, small little details. A lot of people will look at the fight and be like, oh, shit. Like, they'll just look at it and, like, completely dismiss that. But that's super, that's super sneaky, it's super technical. You know, immediately slip on the inside, you get your head, back of your head cast. And at, at a point in time, I was like, oh, shit. Like, 
fuck like and because it was so everything was happening so fast after the fight i was like damn that's that's what like i prepared for this because i i was expecting this but he did it so like it was so unknowingly at the time but he just did it so good so i was like i wouldn't say uh it was me it was a mixture of everything sure. it could again like kind of like cha the changing of the tide you know like I was getting, I got that first minute, and then all of a sudden the change of tide happened, and he built off of it, and then, you know, it is what it is, you know, come back, come back better. Yeah, and I guess the last one, just for this, I mean, what are your keys to victory for this fight? What do you need to happen, need oh. to have happen to make sure you get your arms raised? Oh, I gotta, I gotta be smart, I gotta be technical, and I have to let my, my hands flow, you know, I gotta, I, I can't let them drop either, I can't, I can, I gotta throw, I gotta throw technically, you know, and I feel if I do that and don't get too careless in this fight, you know, I feel like I'll be coming out with the win.